Hey everyone, it's Yayuna, and today we're going to be making some food. Um, right now, what I'm going to begin with is some pickled carrots, Mexican style. So, escabeche, you know, carrots, escabeche. So, I'll show you what all goes in it, and then I'll show myself preparing it. One moment, please. Okay, so you have to have a cup and a half of vinegar, any kind of vinegar. I have white vinegar, cup and a half of water, two, two pounds of carrots, but I do one, one and a half. Um, these are pre-sliced because as they say in Spanish, huevona means lazy. <laughs> so I do these because they're already pre-sliced and they have little ridges and they look nice and everything. Measuring cup, of course garlic i'm gonna use five garlic cloves half an onion i usually use white or yellow two jalapenos unfortunately i don't have them equal size they're supposed to be equal size but it's okay they're close enough and a serrano serrano is spicier also this is peppercorns so pimienta negra black pepper, Mexican oregano, it's it's whole, so it, if you can see, they're whole, and then laurel, or bay leaves, and salt, and this is for cutting up because I'm lazy, makes it easier to slice up the onion, so I slice it up with this. Okay, first we're gonna start off a cup and a half of water. So we're gonna do the stuff that we boil first. So a cup. And I think that's about a half, a half of water. Then a cup and a half of vinegar. And spill for good measure. It's okay. Vinegar is okay. You can clean with vinegar and lemon. And it disinfects everything anyways. So that's for the liquid. Then we take six. Oh wait. There are the bay leaves. So laurel is what it's called in Spanish. Bay leaves. So we take six bay leaves. Put them in. One, that counts as two, three, four, five, six. Because they're kind of big anyway, so we'll do that. Ten peppercorns, or eleven, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, eleven of those. Okay, I already put laurel in. Okay, oregano, it's supposed to be two teaspoons. I didn't measure out the teaspoons. So we'll just guess, you know, guesstimate. And that's about one. You crush it a little bit. We'll do a little bit more because I like Mexican oregano, so probably a little bit more than two but it's okay there's two and then I'm gonna move this aside really quick and we are going to put the garlic in so you have to get five garlic cloves okay. 
four, five. Okay, there's five. And take my trusty knife. I love this knife, it has good weight to it. I don't know, other people have better ones, but it's a Cuisinart. I actually managed to bring this with me from Arizona. So I'm gonna cut the ends off first before I slam, you know. And there's two at a time right here. Don't worry, I'll clean up after myself. And then, you don't have to dice it. Just smash it a little bit. That'll make it easier to peel. Well, supposedly, sometimes it works, other times, not so much. Hey, it worked this time. And you just toss it in the water. Let me try to do this one a little more. Ooh, that one's nice and smushed. And my fingers smell very garlicky afterwards. <laughs> How do you like to slice up your garlic? Tell me in the comments. Is there an easier way? Do I, you know, that I could learn? If you have an easier way, tell me. I'm definitely open to being lazier, for sure. <laughs> um, I also buy the pre-diced um, garlic already, but when it comes to this, I like using fresh garlic. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, what you can do is set this to boiling, but the thing is, is that I'm gonna have to add this other stuff when it starts to boil and turn it down. So I don't wanna begin it quite yet. So let's, Let's just work on the other. And I'm gonna use this whole bag. Again, this one's a one pound bag. The recipe actually calls for two pounds, but I like having the one pound so that the whole thing is immersed. And this is pre-cut, pre-washed, and it has pretty little ridges, so I think it's cool. So the garlic we're done with. And this is garbage, so. Then you'd use half an onion, and this is half an onion that I have left over from dinner a few nights ago. So, now you do, well, ah, let's get the skin off of here. Okay, ready? Let's just slice it. And some pieces will fall out bigger, but it's okay. And you guys, I love these for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Jason will attest to that fact for me that, oh my gosh, I am addicted to these. They're good with tacos. They're good with breakfast. <laughs> To me, they're good on the side of everything. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect, so there you go. Okay, this next part I'm going to do, I highly suggest to people who are not used to cutting up jalapenos to use rubber gloves because the juice, even though you wash your hands really, really well, believe me, I've had this happen, um, you can never quite get it perfect. And uh, rubbing your eyes after touching jalapeno seeds, 
I would not recommend it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut the ends off, this, this end. Cut this end off. And cut this end off. Now, serranos are not jalapeno. Well, they're kind of like jalapenos, but they're skinny and smaller but they're spicy. So this one, I'm going to leave with the seeds in it. And I'm just gonna slice it. So it'll make it spicier. Don't cut the seeds out. And you can add more, more serranos, but I'll be honest, as much as I like spicy food, I don't like it too spicy. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a chicken. So there's that. Now with the jalapenos, we can slice it first. We'll slice them first. And these you can remove the seeds to help you not be spiced out. And I'd like to thank Jason's sister. Believe it or not, it had to take me moving to Oregon I'm meeting Jason to learn how to make escabeche. <laughs> and it was his sister, Kelly, who taught me. So thank you, Kelly. Isn't that funny? I didn't know anyone that knew how to make them in Arizona. <laughs> so there's no seeds there. This one has seeds. So you could take them out. And I might leave a few with seeds to go into the mix, but I'm gonna pretty much take the seeds out because again, seeds are what makes stuff spicy. So if you don't wanna be too spiced out, remove the seeds. Well, I saved a few pieces with seeds in them and I'm putting them in, and so that'll be ready. So we're gonna take our pot to the stove, and what you do is you set it on high, and we're gonna let it come to a boil. Then we'll add the rest of the stuff, and then we'll turn it down. So see you in a few minutes when it's boiling. Before I forget, we gotta put about a teaspoon of salt in. Just to give, oh, that's a little more than a teaspoon. Okay. When it starts boiling, that's when I'll add the, the carrots. And just in case you're wondering, this is a jar I use. It is a, what, one quart? Two, what's it say right there, honey? Pints, how many pints or quarts? Mm -hmm. See right there, there's... That's cups. And this is Six pint. cups. Okay, so... That's, that's milliliters. milliliters yeah. yeah, so it's a big one. I love that jar. water it's boiling let's add the rest of the stuff and now we turn it down to low and you cook it uncovered for 15 minutes so let's set the timer. And when it goes off, we'll take it off the heat and we can put it right in here. And you can let it set for the whole day. You have to let it cool down. Um, <coughs> and I have to admit, the smell is strong. Um, if you have kids in the house who don't like weird smells, I suggest you make this when they're not here. And then air out the house really well <laughs> or make it outside 
but yeah that's all it takes for that and then we're going to put it in here let it cool down put it in the fridge and by the end of the day or by the following day it should be ready to go by the way you know in that 15 minutes as this is cooking make sure you stir it a little bit so that it all gets under the the water and vinegar mixture And again, if you're sensitive to the smell of vinegar, you know, you want to definitely cook this outside or cook this when somebody's not around that can't stand heavy smells, but it's well worth it. All right, our timer just went off. So we'll turn this off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of this gummy stuff to here, then I'll pour the liquid in. And I bought this, this is for frying, but I found out it works really well for scooping up the stuff and putting it in there. Although I'm not doing a good job of it. So if you go to taco trucks and you see the carrots, these are those carrots. So, and I forgot to tell you guys, it's zanahorias, it's carrots. Zanahorias and escabeche. So carrots and the pickled carrots and the pickling. And this should last you, well, if you're a normal person and you don't eat these every single day with every single meal <laughs> by yourself, this could actually last you about a week and a half, two weeks. But if you're someone like me that's really addicted to these, um, they'll last you a week. Two days. Oh, not two days. <laughs> well, if you have a Jason to help you refund, it might last less. <laughs> and you can put everything in here, even the bay leaves, or you can leave them out, whatever you want to do. I like to leave them in and because it's still hot, so... I'm gonna get hot pads. I think I was using the oven by these mitts, but I just don't like burning my hands. So I'm gonna use these. So pick that up. Let me bring this closer to me. And here goes, can you see? There we go. And we got it ready. We got it in there. So, yep. Zanahorias and escabeche. We're going to leave this out to cool down. Don't want to cover it or anything. We want to let it cool down. And in a few hours, we'll put it in the fridge and we'll cover it. And that's it for zanahorias and escabeche, so pickled carrots. All right, you guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something new. I hope you try it. Please try this recipe. And if you do, let me know how it turned out. I want to hear what you thought of it. You know, how you changed it up, made it more yours, uh, because you know, that's the fun thing about cooking. We can change stuff up, right? And add our own flavors that we like. Anyways, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Love you. Bye.